Hi viewers, this is J Swami, Assistant Professor of Zoology. Today we are going to discuss the excretion, basic concepts of excretion. Under this topic, we are going to discuss the introduction regarding excretion, classification of animals based on their nitrogenous wastages, and we will also discuss the types of nitrogenous wastages like ammonia, urea and uric acid formation. Other nitrogen wastages which are very poisonous to our body and methods of excretion in different animals. Let us start with the introduction to the excretion. Generally, all these animals, they take food material for the production of energy the food material may be carbohydrates proteins and the lipids and during the process of digestion and the respiration the food material get degraded and the degradation of chemical bonds that releases energy this is utilized by the organism for their growth and the metabolic activities at the same time along with the energy there is every possibility to form different kinds of wastage material waste material apart from the waste material there is a carbon dioxide metabolic water ammonia urea and uric acid like nitrogen wastages as we know the carbon dioxide is expelled out from the body through the respiration through the respiratory organs and the remaining nitrogen waste should be expelled out from our body the main aim of the excretion is the removal of nitrogenous wastages from our body which are being formed during the different kinds of metabolic activities there are uh, many waste material waste substances apart from them due to the degradation of proteins and nucleic acids we will get the nitrogen wastages they should be removed from the body that is a removal of nitrogenous waste from our body is defined as the excretion removal of nitrogen related substances nitrogen related wastages from our body is known as the is defined as the excretion and we should remember one thing the excretion of nitrogen wastages and excretion of uh, excretory material like the uh, ejection of undigested food material is both of them they are different we have to distinguish the difference in between the defecation and the excretion of the nitrogen wastages in the defecation the undigested food they get expelled from the digestive system but in the case of the excretion of the nitrogen wastages due to the formation of nitrogen waste in the metabolic activities they should be sent out along with them we will also send out uh, excess amount of water salts drugs and other uh, unuseful substances so we have to uh, determine that there are certain body fluids and we have to maintain the water and the salt hemostasis other homeostasis and there will be a osmoregulation all these things that is maintenance of the homeostasis and the osmoregulation by expelling of water and the salts that should be treated as the excretion right there are different so one, one more thing and the all the waste substances which are formed in the organism they may not be treated as a waste material to other organisms for example if you observe the water water is the end product of respiration okay if it is excess in amount then this should be removed from the body if at all you did not remove the excess amount of water you may 
susceptible to edema. But in some of the organisms, the met metabolic water is itself is very essential and highly uh, utilized by the organism. And if you take into consideration the carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide is also an end product of the metabolic activities. It may be expelled out through the respiration, but the same carbon dioxide is utilized in some anabolic activities or synthetic activity, synthesis activities. That we may not determine the uh, nature of, we may not determine the excreted material based upon their chemical nature. It is very difficult. Right? So, this is all the introduction related to the excretion. And coming to the classification of animals based upon their uh, nitrogenous wastages. The entire animals, they are degraded into, divided into three groups based upon their excretory product. Aminotelic organisms, they excrete ammonia and ureotelic organisms, they excrete urea uricotelic organisms they excrete uric acid uric acid based upon the type of excretory product they excrete out the animals get divided into three major groups aminotelic organisms excrete ammonia ureotelic organisms excretes urea and uricotelic organisms they excrete uric acid let us see uh, what about the aminotelic organisms, ureotelic and the uricotelic organisms in detail. First the aminotelic organisms. Aminotelic organisms that is wherever you go the all the organisms whether ammoni, aminotelic, ureotelic and uricotelic the main compound which is formed from the nitrogen waste is the ammonia. Some of the animals they excrete ammonia as it is and some of them they get converted to the ammonia and urea and some of them they get converted to ammonia into uric acid. So what is the difference among all these three is ammonia is highly toxic, urea is somewhat less toxic and uric acid is furthermore less toxic based upon their toxicity levels ammonia is highly toxic, urea moderate and uric acid less toxic than these two and those animals which live in the aquatic environment they tend to release ammonia they tend to excrete ammonia so release or excretion of ammonia is known as aminotelism and it is easily soluble in water and so that it can easily diffused through the cell uh, membranes into the surrounding environment. The aquatic animals like the porifers, sponges, sealantirates, crustaceans of the arthropoda, echinoderms, ostrichthys fishes, bony fishes, salamanders of amphibia and larvae of amphibia, all of them, their main excretory material is the ammonia. These all are the aminotelic organisms. Fishes, the vertebrates, Fishes, they excrete ammonia in the form of ammonium ion. Ammonia is NH3. This is the ammonia. Whereas ammonium ion NH4 plus. That is, fishes excrete ammonia but in ammonium ion form. In all the animals, the free ammonium, otherwise the free ammonia, that get combines with the glutamate and forms the glutamine. Why they should be formed into glutamine and they, they will be transferred from uh, tissues to the excretory organs. Okay. For example, if there is a ammonia in the tissue, okay, that is interact with the glutamate and convert it to glutamine. This glutamine is the non-poisonous state of ammonia. Generally, ammonia is highly toxic, but the glutamine form of ammonia is non-toxic form, non-poisonous form. So, it forms in the tissues 
and it is transferred to the excretory organs transferred to the excretory organs in the excretory organs it is again de degraded into glutamine get degraded into glutamate and the ammonia this ammonia is excreted out in the case of fishes this ammonia excreted through because there are uh, mesonephric kidneys in the fishes one pair of mesonephric kidneys are uh, present these kidneys may not excrete more ammonia so that more amount of ammonia is excreted through epithelium of gills epithelium of the gills right what happens they receive more and more amount of sodium from the surrounding water and uh, as a compensation they release ammonium ions sodium is sodium plus right there is ammonium ammonium plus so how many number of ammonia are excreted out that many number of sodium ions they received in they receive inside that is the uh, importance of the ammonia right then uh, this is highly diffusible as we already discussed all the bony fishes uh, larvae of the amphibia and aquatic uh, insects they uh, excrete ammonia into the surrounding water through the diffusion process by using little amount of energy this is all about the uh, aminotelic organisms coming to the ureotelic animals those animals which excrete urea as their main excretory product so the release of excretion of urea is ureotelism most of the terrestrial animals they excrete urea as to that of amphibians mammals they excrete hyper concentrated urine hyper concentrated urine okay whenever you compare the uh, toxicity levels of ammonia and urea urea is somewhat less toxic than the ammonia less toxic than the ammonia okay uh, not only the terrestrial animals but also the aquatic animals like the cartilage fishes chondrichthyes fishes skates rays okay and all the uh, sharks they excrete the urea okay they not only the excrete urea they store urea in their blood and they transport urea and thereby they regulate the asthma uh, they uh, overcome the asthma regulatory problems okay also the mammals are terrestrial animals but they excrete the urea okay and the if you observe the amphibians this amphibians they excrete urea see here uh, although they excrete urea it is somewhat expensive thing here it should be 3 sorry 3 atps are required for the synthesis of each urea molecule 3 atps are required for the synthesis of urea molecule okay so some of them they are unable to uh, spend that much amount of energy in the synthesis of the urea in order to overcome this problem the animals they lead amphibious mode of life okay let us see the amphibian larvae they are almost all aquatic completely and they excrete the ammonia whereas the adults they excrete the urea so that is so some portion of their life life cycle they excrete ammonia in order to overcome the spending of atp is in the synthesis of urea okay and the synthesis of urea takes place in the liver if you observe the xenopus the clawed toad of the amphibia that excretes the uh, ammonia because always it lives in the water okay if you observe the protopterus that is a blind salamander okay whenever it is uh, moving actively in the water that excretes ammonia but whenever it undergoes estuation then that time they excrete urea as usually the earthworms of the annelida they excrete the urea so this is about the uh, uricotelic 
organisms ureotelic organisms coming to the uricotelic organisms those animals which excrete uric acid they are termed as the uricotelic organisms okay generally uric acid is in the semi solid condition and it tends to be use less amount of water those animals which are living in certain habitats where there is a scarcity of water they tend to excrete the uric acid so excretion of uric acid requires less amount of water it requires less amount of water okay now the best examples for the uricotel organisms are the aves terrestrial reptiles all the insects terrestrial snails and terrestrial crustaceans they excrete the uric acid in general any organism the kidneys of any organism they synthesize they prepare liquid uric acid uric acid in the liquid form after that that is transported to deposited into cloaca and here the walls of cloaca they reabsorb the entire amount of water from the liquid uric acid and it becomes solidified it become uric acid crystals otherwise solid uric acid that will be sent out expelled out from the body through the defecation along with the undigested food the solid uric acid also get excreted out and one more important thing here it is the excretory uh, substance of the certain birds certain aves like the pelican grass leucogeranus and gannet cormorant birds they excrete uric acid substance in the form of guano this guano is used commercially for the extraction of uric acid guano is the excretory product excretory substance of certain birds like the pelican gannet and cormorant birds so this is known as a guano this guano collected and used commercially for the extraction of uric acid extraction of uric acid and the animals like the butterflies animals like the butterflies from the insect they also excrete uric acid but this uric acid is converted into pigments and that will be stored in their body so this is the basic reason for the uh, attaining beautiful colors of the butterflies thereby they store the uric acid as in the form of pigments and they attain beautiful colors and if you observe the mosquito larvae wrigglers then they excrete uric acid and this uric acid converted into allantoin and some of the mammals they excrete some sort of uric acid and in the presence of uricase enzyme it is also get converted into allantoin if we observe the human beings and the primates uricase is absent so that the primates and the human beings they are unable to synthesize allantoin due to the absence of uricase it is very very important okay uricase enzyme is absent in the primates and the human beings so that the uric acid may not be converted into allantoin because it requires the catalytic activity of the uricase enzyme uricase enzyme so this is all about the uh, different kinds of uh, organisms and their excretory materials right then uh, we may not tell that uh based upon uh, various things based upon various things the animals get divided into three groups okay that is uh, classifying an organism into these three groups based upon their excretory product is highly impossible if you take into consideration any organism okay why because the nature of nitrogen is waste which are forming in the individuals that is purely depend upon the evolutionary history of that organism habitat of that organism and the availability of the water of that organism where actually it lives where actually it habituates that determines okay 
evolutionary history, habitat and availability of the water that determines the nitrogen waste okay, in different animals. Why? Because those animals which live in the uh, aquatic environment where plenty amount of water is there, they are usually aminotelic, they excrete ammonia. And those animals uh, which have the availability of the moderate amount of water like the terrestrial animals they excrete urea okay so this urea mixed up with the water dissolved in the water and that will be excreted out in the form of urine if you observe the amphibians just now we have discussed in the embryonic stage they excrete urea okay so the they have the uh, shellless eggs thereby uh, they excrete the urea outside okay if you observe the embryos mammal embryos they also excrete the urea okay so that flows with the uh, maternal circulatory system if you observe the larvae of the amphibians otherwise the frog so they lives in the water like a fish and they excrete the ammonia if you observe the reptiles aves they developed in the clidaic eggs and due to the thickness due to the rigidity of the shell okay it is due to its impermeability the animals they do not excrete urea outside okay so if at all they excrete urea that will be stored within the eggs and that will become lethal to the organisms whenever it if the levels are um, accumulated more so that the reptiles aves they excrete uric acid and it will be stored in the shell as a semi-solid uh, state and after the breaking down of the egg shell that will be excreted outside right so there are certain examples for example uh, if you observe the terrestrial testudos they excrete uric acid but if you observe the turtles and terrapins they may excrete ammonia and urea okay so certain examples for example if we observe the life cycle of the frog okay the tadpole larva that excrete ammonia but the adult that excrete urea okay whenever the same organism if it is undergo estivation or hibernation that time that excrete the uric acid instead of ammonia and urea that excrete the uric acid if you observe the salamanders, if you keep them in the water, they excrete ammonia. If you leave them in the terrestrial environment, they excrete urea. So based upon their adjustment and the availability of the water, they excrete different kinds of uh, nitrogenous wastages. Then coming to the different kinds of uh, nitrogen wastages, okay, the major role played by the ammonia, urea and the uric acid. Ammonia, urea and the uric acid. Okay. See one by one. First the ammonia. The ammonia, the levels of ammonia in any organism's blood, the optimum level should be 0 0.0012, 0 0.003. If the level of the ammonia is beyond this 0 0.003 for anadamal of blood, then that becomes highly toxic. It may cause death. It leads to the lethality. It leads to the lethality. Okay. So that is whenever the concentration of ammonia in the blood, 100 ml of blood, if it is more than 0 0.003, then that should be excreted out otherwise that may lead to the death of the individual death of the individual okay uh, some of the times what happens urea may be get converted sorry urea may be get converted into ammonia by an enzyme which is known as the urease Sumner was the scientist Sumner was the scientist who proved experimentally the conversion of urea into ammonia by urease enzyme what he did is he has taken a rabbit and injected the urease enzyme into the rabbit 
and thereby the excretory material of rabbit is urea as it is a mammal it excretes urea okay so this urea get converted into ammonia by the given injection other by by the administered enzyme urease and due to the accumulation of ammonia within the blood of the rabbit it undergo death it leads to the death of the individual that is the ammonium levels ammonium concentration of the organism that should not exceed the 0.003 for 100 ml of blood okay let us see the formation of ammonia ammonia formation takes place in two steps one is the uh, transamination where there is a transfer of ammonia group from one amino acid to the another keto acid so this reaction is mediated by the enzymes which are called as the transaminases or amino transferases transaminases or amino transferases okay then the second term is deamination second process it may be the oxidative deamination or non oxidative deamination deamination deletion removal of amino group from one amino acid so this released amino otherwise amino group otherwise ammonia that will be uh, excreted out if you observe the fishes the ammonia is excreted through the epithelium of the gills so already we discussed that how much amount of uh, ammonia is excreted out that much amount of sodium will be received in let us see the transamination and deamination process so here uh, here there is a amino group of one amino acid okay it is transferred to one keto acid whenever they fuse together this amino group transfer to this keto group okay so here there is a transamination so there is a translocation or transfer of amino group from one amino acid to the another one so the enzymes are transaminase and otherwise amino transferase see here there is a alanine it is amino acid which contain amino group okay here it is a alpha keto glutarate alpha keto glutarate so the amino group from the alanine it is transfer to the alpha keto glutarate and thereby it becomes glutamate it becomes glutamate and the another thing that modified into pyruvate then modified into pyruvate so here there is a transfer of amino group from alanine to the alpha keto glutarate takes place that results in the formation of glutamate it is nothing but the transamination reaction and here if you observe the deamination here we see the amino group in the glutamate this undergo a removal of ammonia removal of ammonia ammonia is removed from the glutamate ammonia is relieved from the glutamate under the presence of glutamate dehydrogenase enzyme okay so the nad get reduced into nadh2 due to the dehydrogenase and oxoglutarate is being formed so the release of ammonia from amino acids takes place by two ways two steps transamination and the deamination both of them they tend to form the release of ammonia from the amino acids ammonia from the amino acid is highly toxic then compared to the urea and uric acid the ammonia is highly toxic we should remember okay then coming to the urea so in all the terrestrial animals urea is a fundamental excretory material so this urea is being formed from the addition of carbon dioxide and as well as the ammonia right so it is less toxic than the uh, ammonia when compared to the ammonia it is less toxic urea is less toxic and 
it requires less amount of water it requires less amount of water for the excretion of the urea and the acceptable levels are 15 to 38 mg of urea is accepted per 100 ml of blood it is 0.015% to 0.038 percentage if beyond this it is somewhat toxic it is somewhat toxic okay then if you see what is the urea is one carbon dioxide get interact with the two ammonium two amino groups this is nothing but the urea that is ammonia is excreted out in addition with the carbon dioxide so the carbon dioxide fuses with the two ammonium molecules that tend to form the urea this takes place in the uh, urea cycle otherwise ornithin cycle it takes place in the liver it takes place in the liver okay now this urea cycle or uh, ornithin cycle it is for the first time explained by the hans krebs and the kurt hanselit so that on behalf of their names it is known as the krebs hanselit cycle krebs hanselit cycle okay and afterwards it is a step wise the entire steps which are taking place in the krebs hanselit cycle are clearly explained clearly explained by two scientists sarah ratner sarah ratner and the philip cohen sarah ratner and philip cohen they uh, clearly described the uh, urea cycle the entire uh, equation which represents ammonium bicarbonate plus aspartate 3 atps plus h2o gives us the formation of urea fumarate 2 adp 2 inorganic phosphates 1 pyrophosphate 1 adenosine monophosphate and 2 protons 2 protons okay then if you see the formation of urea urea cycle it takes place in five steps urea cycle takes place in five steps okay the uh, step wise uh, sequence is in the first step what happens synthesis of carbamylophosphate takes place it requires two atps you should remember okay and second step is formation of citrullin third step is synthesis of arginosuccinate fourth step is degradation of arginosuccinate into fumarate and arginine and finally from the arginine there will be there will be enzyme which is known as arginase that forms the urea so at the formation of the arginosuccinate again we require one atp so total three atps two ATPs, uh, atps at the formation of carbamyl phosphate and one atp at the formation of arginosuccinate okay what is happening we will see see here this is the first step here the waste nitrogen or ammonia they fused with co2 or bicarbonates okay under the catalytic activity of carbamyl phosphate synthase carbamyl phosphate synthase that fuses the ammonia with the carbon dioxide and forms the carbamyl phosphate it requires two atps it requires two atps this carbamylophosphate added to the arnithin added to the arnithin under the catalytic activity of the arnithin carbamyl transferase arnithin carbamyl transferase so under the catalytic activity of the arnithin carbamyl transferase 
carbamyl phosphate and the ornithine they fuse to form citrulline they fuse to form citrulline okay this citrulline get added with the aspartate aspartic acid under the catalytic activity of the arginosuccinate synthase that leads to the formation of arginosuccinic acid arginosuccinate here we require one atp so previously two atp is here and one atp here totally we require three atp is for the synthesis of one urea molecule now this argon argino arginosuccinate get uh, degraded into there is a lyase activity arginosuccinate lyase that degrades the arginosuccinate into fumarate and the arginine fumarate and the arginine okay fumaric acid and the arginine right now this arginine undergoes catalytic activity of the arginase enzyme right that time this arginine get degraded into urea and ornithine urea and ornithine this synthesized urea mixed up with the blood stream and reaches kidneys get filtered and mixed up with the appropriate amount of water appropriate amount of water and that will be excreted out that will be excreted out that is whenever you observe the amount of water which is required for the excretion of urea okay then if you compare with that of the excretion of ammonia ammonia requires more and more amount of water for its excretion whereas urea requires somewhat less when compared to the ammonia and uric acid furthermore less water is required so based upon the availability of the water they may excrete ammonia or urea or uric acid so here finally the urea has been formed and ornithine again ready to mix up with the carbamylophosphate okay it is a cyclic reaction it is a cyclic reaction which is takes place in the liver we should remember most of the people they are thinking that the urea synthesis means they may happen they thought that they may happen in that might happen in the kidneys no kidneys are the only filtering organs urea cycle ornithine cycle takes place in the liver right so it's also known as a krebs ensilate cycle then these are the steps which are involved in the urea cycle here we require two atps for the formation of carbamylophosphate and one atp for the formation of arginosuccinate arginosuccinic acid total three atps we require for the formation of a urea molecule coming to the uric acid the third uh, major nitrogen product is the uric acid see here the features of uric acid uric acid is insoluble in water and highly complex structure basically it has a purine ring what is a purine ring it is a cyclohexane ring in addition with the imidazole ring or cyclopentane ring okay like that of arginine uh, adenine and guanine it also looks like the purines okay there was experiment done by the edson what is the uh, reveal of the experiment is the pigeons they convert the ammonia not directly into the uric acid they convert the ammonia into hypoxanthine first and this hypoxanthine undergoes catalytic activity of the xanthine oxidase and finally that converted into uric acid so in the pigeon liver ammonia do not directly uh, modified into uric acid there is an intermediate product like the hypoxanthine it is revealed by the edson's experiment edson's experiment now in the human beings also there will be a formation of uric acid but it is due to the degradation of purines adenine guanine 
ओके एंड दी जैंथीन ऑक्सीडेज व्हिच इज रिस्पांसिबल फॉर द कन्वर्शन ऑफ हाइपोजैंथीन टू यूरिक एसिड इज अवेलेबल इन दी लिवर एंड इंटेस्टाइनल म्यूकोजा लिवर एंड दी इंटेस्टाइनल म्यूकोजा राइट देन if you observe the synthesis of the uh, uric acid this is the structure of uric acid here uh, c5 1 2 3 4 5 five carbons four nitrogens and the four hydrogens three oxygens c5 h4 n4 o3 it is the structure of the uric acid see how the uric acid going to be formed it is takes place from the nucleotides okay here it is adenosine monophosphate xanthine monophosphate and the guanosine monophosphate so here all of them they get degraded into the adenosine and the inosine the xanthosine and the guanosine due to the activity of nucleotidase enzymes nucleotidase enzymes are the enzymes which convert the uh, mononucleotide phosphates into their respective sugars adenosine inosine xanthosine and the guanosine due to the activity of the nucleotidase enzyme in the second step adenosine inosine get converted to hypoxanthine whereas guanosine get converted to guanine okay and the xanthosine converted to xanthine finally hypoxanthine converted to xanthine guanine converted into xanthine so the final product is the xanthine xanthine oxidase is the enzyme which convert the xanthine into uric acid which convert the xanthine into uric acid okay this is the uh, synthesis of the uric acid so here it is a guanosine monophosphate finally converted to xanthine adenosine monophosphate finally converted to xanthine and here that converted to uric acid in the presence of xanthine oxidase then there are other nitrogen wastages like the spiders they excrete guanine in the solid form some of the marine telias they excrete tmo trimethyl amino oxide and if you observe some of the organisms they excrete allantoin they excrete allantoin okay so except human beings and the uh, primates all the other mammals they form allantoin that is the uric acid get converted into oxidized into allantoin okay due to the presence of the urate oxidase there is an enzyme which has the copper inbuilt copper okay that stimulates the conversion of uh, uric acid into allantoin okay if you observe the telias fishes and the bony fishes allantoin undergo degradation and form the allantoic acid and that will be excreted as it is so this uh, reaction is mediated by allantoinase allantoinase and if you observe the chondrichthys fishes and the amphibians allantoic acid that is undergoing allantoicase enzyme and that will be converted to urea okay because the excreted material of uh, cartilage fishes and amphibians is the urea okay if you observe the invertebrates which are marine forms the urea get degraded into ammonia ions and this ammonia ions form they will as easily excrete so uh, based upon the uh, nature where there is a presence and absence of their respective enzymes some of them they excrete the allantoin and here also we will see uh, creatine and creatinine creatin is the uh, source of rich source of energy that is a creatin phosphate it is a component of creatin phosphate creatinin is the excretory product okay and the hippuric acid if you see the difference in between uh, 
creatine and the creatinine this is the single chain is the creatine okay and the aromatic compound is the creatinine then uh, if you observe the uh, certain uh, specialties of the uric acid as we know the uh, gout disorder what happens the gout disorder is if there is a enhancement in the uric acid level in the body fluids that leads to the gout disease gout disease so in this disease what happens this uric acid get converted into sodium urate crystals and which are insoluble in water and they will be stored in the joints due to this uh, formation of the sodium urate crystals okay there will be a swelling within the uh, joints and there will be burning pain okay and severe pain is there and some of the times the same sodium urate crystals they may be stored in the kidneys okay these are the kidney stones they uh, not only damage the kidneys but also they interrupt the the flow of the primary urine within the nephrons okay it is uh, predominantly seen gout disease is predominantly seen in the males okay there are three person may get affected per thousand people so the risk factors otherwise the reasons are there are the differences in the excretion of uric acid and there is a deficiency of enzyme hgprt what is the hgprt is hypoxanthin guanine phosphoribosyl transferase hypoxanthin h hgprt hypoxanthin guanosin or guanine phosphoribosyl transferase hypoxanthin guanine phosphoribosyl transferase due to the deficiency of this hgprt uh, thereby there will be accumulation of formation of more uric acid okay some of the times the uh, poisoning of the kidneys with the lead poisoning so thereby there will be decrease in the excretion of uric acid for the uh, treatment of the gout disease gout disease we will use allopurinol allopurinol what is the allopurinol is it looks like structurally similar to the hypoxanthin okay then thereby it reduces the activity of the xanthine oxidase enzyme and thereby there will be decrease in the uric acid productivity so this is the extra information regarding the uric acid okay then if you come to the methods of excretion in different animals it is very very important in competitive exam point of view because if you observe the protozoans in the protozoans only we have uh, contractile vacuoles which meant for the excretion and as well as the osmoregulation okay protozoans poriferans and the cilentrates all of them the excretory materials diffused from the body surfaces into the aquatic medium body surface into the aquatic medium and coming to the platyhelminthes they have specialized cells for the excretion which are known as the flame cells flame cells are the excretory organs of platyhelminthes and you come to the nematyhelminthes they have renate cells renate cells are the excretory organs and come to the anelida they have specialized organs which are called as the nephridia for the excretion and also we see chlorogogen cells we also see chlorogogen cells the role of chlorogogen cells in uh, excretion uh, still it is ambiguous so the anelida nephridia and if you come to the arthropoda malphigian tubules malphigian tubules are the main excretory organs apart from that if you observe the uh, some of the insects there are urate cells and if you observe the crustaceans there are coxal glands 
antenary glands green glands these all are the excretory organs of the um, crustaceans okay come to the mollusca renal gland are the excretory organs of the molluscans renal gland and there are no particular excretory organs in the echinodermata but there are certain phagocytes which take care of the uh, excretion process if we observe the vertebrates otherwise chordates they have protonephric mesonephric and metanephric kidneys for the excretion so usually they will be asked uh, in the competitive examinations so what are the excretory organs of different animals different animals okay this is all about the introduction to the excretion thank you thank you one and all